more than obviously at this point with our ACLs when it comes to syntax and when it comes to application. These are obviously very important topics and we've spent a lot of time with those. But I want to spend a few minutes here dedicated to where in your network to place an ACL. We've kind of hinted at it one or two places in the other labs. But I want to bring you a couple of rules of thumb that will really help you decide where to best place your ACL. Because when it comes to the placement, what we really want to do is avoid wasting resources. We don't want a router to have to route packets if the packets aren't going to arrive at the final destination anyway. We don't want to take up bandwidth with packets that are going to get stopped on the other side of a wide area network. We'd rather stop them on the closer side. We'd rather stop traffic as close to the source as we possibly can. And in this particular case, what we have is host A at 2111, host B at 2211, host C at 2311, and we're talking about stopping traffic sourced from host A that's destined for host B, but we still want A to be able to talk to C. And in this particular case, and just about every real world situation that I can think of, what you're going to do is use an extended ACL. I use an extended ACL whenever possible, lab environment and otherwise, because frankly you're just so much better off being able to match on source IP and or destination IP and then you have all the port numbers you could choose from and with the source, uh, excuse me, with a standard ACL, what are we looking at? We're looking at the source IP address and that can cause some complications. Let's talk about that for just a moment. Let me slide that over just a tad because when it comes to our extended ACL, what we want to do with that is stop the traffic as soon as we possibly can. Because in this particular scenario, if we don't want packets to get from A to B, there's no reason for packets to be sent across the WAN over to Router 2 and then stopped. You know, we want to stop them at Router 1. And an extended ACL allows us to do that. And a best practice that I would, I would recommend that you adapt is to apply that extended ACL to incoming packets to the interface closest to the packet source because that actually saves a little more work as opposed to filtering those packets as they're leaving router one because when you apply the extended ACL to the incoming packets the ACL is applied before routing even takes place the packets aren't even sent to the routing engine if they're filtered by the extended ACL so that does save a little bit of work it would not be the worst thing in the world to filter them as they leave router one but I'd rather filter them as they're coming in so that way, you know, with an extended ACL, we could say, okay, packets sourced from 2111 and destined for 2211, well, those are going to be filtered. The packets could still get from A to C with no problem at all. Now, what about a standard ACL? Thing is, if we put deny 2111 on router 1, the incoming interface, that's going to block all traffic from host A, and that is likely not what you wanted to do because if we were going to do that we probably just would get rid of host A to begin with right well the thing is not only is that going to block the traffic going from A to B it blocks the traffic going from A to everywhere and again that's not what we want to do now frankly a standard ACL usage in real world networking I'm not gonna say it's dead or anything it's certainly not but again I would rather use an extended ACL about the only time that you're going to be forced to use a standard ACL is if an exam question forces you to do it or maybe in an, a client who doesn't really know what they're talking about. But that's okay. We won't tell them. Standard ACLs, if you have to use one of those, you're generally going to apply that as close to the destination as possible. We could not even put the ACL on packets coming into Router 2 because, again, that would block packets going from A to C. Since you can only block on the source IP, the best place to put a standard ACL is as close to the destination as possible. Even then, that might not be perfect. It depends on your network's topology. But again, just a couple of great rules of thumb here. If you're using, using an extended ACL, filter the packets as close to the packet source as you possibly can. And using a standard ACL, that is likely going to force you to apply it as close to the destination as possible. That is enough placement for right now. We've got a couple of closing remarks, no pun intended, when you see what the topic of the next video is. And then we'll move on from ACLs. See you there.